Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, man. You're watching the Theo Not video for the 29th of June here in 2021. And we have a little bit of a holiday drift and bullish holiday drift or open air, hot air, levitation, hot air balloon, whatever word you want to use. But that really refers mainly to the NASDAQ because it, its hot air balloon continues to drift. And think about that. It's just an open air pocket or a low volume relatively low volatility bullish drift and that's where the nasdaq is but it really isn't all bullish because the nasdaq was the strongest market but the russell was the weakest and it continues to trade down as the plan as the upper limit of the 2350 so that is working as expected the puts or any type of bearish position similar to those earlier in the month up against the same level, they're working. And that's similarly true within the IWM. And that's your ETF that's tradable. So that is playing off the 232.50 level, but that's the Russell. And again, that is a large part small or small cap stocks. But the S&P is made up of everything. And a little bit of everything, a little bit of this, a little bit of that would include, and by the way, this is the market watch tab, on the heat map of the S&P 500 here in Thinkorswim. And what we're seeing, you can actually hit the shift key to take a look at individual sectors. And this is what I look at for the sector performance. So look at it. It has financials are weak, but technology strong. And the weakest sector, the most decline in today's session was the utilities, which we can barely see on the chart map. Nevertheless, this is technology it makes up a large part of the S&P. This is consumer discretionary, that's financial. Over here is healthcare and so on and so forth. Staples, industrials, and then communication services. Now that's the S&P. And we're seeing this from the perspective of, well, there's not really one sector leading today's tape. Again, it's the end of June. Rebalancing, your reason is probably just as good as mine, but we just take the facts as they are. And there was no singular pocket of strength. It wasn't the tech names necessarily. And there's no single pocket of weakness except for utilities. So that has led the market to a chop or a sideways line or at least sideways behavior in today's session, which made it quite frustrating, I think, for a lot of traders. But in the NASDAQ, these are the monsters of tech. That's Microsoft, Apple. They were bullish on today's session. In fact, App Microsoft was up 1%. Well, come back to it in a moment. And then Apple is up 1.5%. And one would think that's very, very bullish. And it was, but cross balance that with Google that was down about a percent or half a percent. And they are split in two. Facebook, which was down 1%. Tesla, which is down 1%. And Amazon, which itself is massively unchanged. Now the monsters of tech split their performance, but did that split the NASDAQ? No. In fact, the NASDAQ, this is an hourly chart. Let's pull that to a 15, pull that to a five, and then pull that to a one. It continued squeezing higher. And that's a short squeeze, gamma squeeze, or just some type of bullish levitation, bullish drift, low volume drift. Yet we are at those highs in the NASDAQ. And behind the NASDAQ, or a component, or at least a tradable ETF, is the technology sector, which is XLK. Now it saw similar strength in the market. Remember that Amazon actually doesn't take part in the XLK, it's part of the Y, which is consumer discretionaries. Again, that's over here. So in terms of Amazon, think of it maybe as retail. Again, this is where sectors can become muddied. Nevertheless, the XLY, which is consumer discretionary retail, it's just shy of the high, whereas XLK, technology sector in general, extended. And if you do trade the options or trade other index products, this is the Qs or the triple Qs, and it as well extended up with the NASDAQ. So if you're a bullish, the NASDAQ is your friend. If you're bearish, it's the Russell. And that's just the bigger picture on the market itself. But if we step outside the market, and one quick comment, 
this is showing continued bifurcation. And that's just a big term that means sector rotation going in different directions, financials, technology, or other sectors. Money is rotating, and that's been the theme. The Russell has been flat to sideways, and money has just rotated back and forth, or at least sector performance has given and taken to different sectors. Not one is leading, and that's again the Russell, which is broad. In the S&P, it's similarly, but again, let's take a look at this. We'll actually pull this just for fun. Let's pull a five minute chart or a one minute chart of the S&P and let's put, just for fun, you can always do this on your own screen, a comparison tool. And that way we can compare what the NASDAQ did with any other index. And for me, I like to look at it at the bottom of the chart. So comparison will make it into a bar chart and we'll take a look at the SPX and the SPX will be at the bottom. Now that doesn't help because it compares the SPX to the S&P futures, but if we plug in the NASDAQ, you can see the bifurcation. And that just meant money flowed. I'm trying to draw this. Money was flowing rapidly and persistently into the NASDAQ and for the most part out of the S&P. And again, the S&P comprises financials and other sectors over here, particularly, well, not particularly, but the weakness in utilities. But uh, the NASDAQ is just the tech sector. So it pretty much is focused on XLK. So the NASDAQ, which is XLK or technology centric, and the other market is just, again, bearish or short-term bearish. Well, let's take our focus away from the markets and jump the perspective up to what happened outside the equity markets because I think the headlines will still be there at those highs. If you look at crude oil, as it loads, there's crude oil. It is trending to the upside with the stock market. That is an economically sensitive commodity, meaning when the economy does well, crude oil tends to do well. And you're seeing that still drift, the open air drift or the hot air balloon levitation of the market. That's the easiest way I can sort of explain it. It's just a low volume, kind of a holiday drift to the upside. And that, that does happen in summer months. And crude is up there as well. Now gold pulled lower. Now gold continues a downtrend. And that key level to watch going forward is 1750. Outside of that, we have the bond market trading into a sideways range. That's TLT. And ZB, which is the 30-year bond, is pushing up off of that 152 low that was made mid-2021, just recently. Uh, ZN is your 10-year Treasury note. And again, just kind of quickly flipping through, TNX is your yield. And I think this is what has a lot of traders puzzled on the broad perspective because inflation strong, inflation's growing, or at least it was, and yields were going up. But now the last few months, yields have actually gone down. Similarly, gold, look at GC, uh, gold has gone down as well. Now, before we conclude the video, I always like to make a quick reference outside of the markets and the, and the stocks we're looking at to the stocks making new 52 week highs. And the reason is these are strong stocks getting stronger. If you need to add some bullish delta or some type of bullish position, these might be a place to focus and they're consistent. For example, these are the largest market cap stocks that made new 52 week highs. And in some cases, new all time highs. They include familiar names such as Microsoft, Nvidia, Adobe, Nike and uh, Costco, Intuit and Target and the list goes on. You can actually scan this in your own thinkorswim, but before we go, we'll just pinpoint a few of those names. And this is Microsoft. That's in large part why the Dow or why the NASDAQ was so strong today. NVIDIA continues to run to the upside ahead of its split coming up. Adobe got the breakout from 520 and 530 and hasn't looked back. That's also boosting up the NASDAQ. Nike had its gap, and we actually had a very strange trade uh, with a Nike that played up away from support. Stock was located underneath the low, came close, but the target was up to the prior high. It's basically playing what we call low to high, and the stock gapped above. So Nike is one of those surprise earnings type of plays 
in the range. It just continued the uptrend. And beyond that, we had Costco. Not stellar, but it's up there. And we'll kind of finish with Target. And Target's a big retail name alongside Walmart and other retail stocks. And it continues to the upside. So this is the broad picture. It is a little bit confusing. There is money rotating in and out of the market. It is not all bullish, but clearly is not all to the downside. So please be careful. Please be patient with your put positions. If you are trading to the downside, that would be the probability play. Be patient. Look for the snapback. Look for the rubber band snapback to occur. But it can take a little time before that happens. So playing the downside requires patience. Playing the upside requires pullbacks. As always, be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosenblum with tonight's Theo video update for June 29, 2021.